Welcome back to Level Headed Mind. In today's video, we're going to be talking about vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. And this is in response to a viewer who commented about vitamin D and the benefits of vitamin D in treating depression. So we're going to get into that right now. So what is vitamin D? Well, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin and there are two main forms of vitamin D. Vitamin D2 that is found in plant sources and vitamin D3 that is found in animal sources and the sun, hence the name, the sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D is well known for promoting calcium absorption and being very critical to maintain bone health. It is actually shown that sufficient amounts of vitamin D can prevent rickets in children, which is bone deformities in children or bone weakness in children, and prevents osteomalacia and osteoporosis in older adults. However, Vitamin D is found in many tissues of our body and there are vitamin D receptors all over, including our brain. And vitamin D has been found to be neuroprotective and anti-inflammatory. It also promotes cell growth and is involved in neurotransmission. So for those neurotransmitters to connect and cross those synapses, vitamin D is very important in that process. It's also shown to be beneficial in regulating the immune system and has immune protective properties as well as being important in many physiological processes such as regulating glucose and vitamin D deficiency can actually lead to bone pain, muscle weakness, fatigue and has been associated with various mental health and neuropsychiatric disorders such as depression, anxiety, autism, and cognitive decline or cognitive dysfunction. However, the research is very unclear if a low vitamin D level causes depression or if depression causes a low vitamin D level. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? it's hard to tell. Furthermore, it's hard to say with the current research whether or not vitamin D can actually treat depression. There are two main camps or two main thoughts about vitamin D. First camp is vitamin D treats depression. There's tons of research out there to prove this and it's very beneficial to support the treatment of depression. The other camp says, actually, no, there's a lot of research out there that says vitamin D does not do anything for depression. Yes, it aff affects bone health, and yes, it can affect other areas of the body, but when we're talking about depression, not a lot of research to support that. So what do we do when there's this mixed bit of evidence floating around? Well, in my practice, I do believe in vitamin D supplementation to support those with depression if I find the vitamin D level is low. So that's why it's very important to get your blood work done. If your provider writes for you to get a blood analysis or get blood work done and it includes vitamin D, please do it. Do not ignore this step. This is a very important step and can be crucial to your mental health well-being. Because yes, though we don't know which came first, it has been shown to be a link between low vitamin D levels and depression. And so it's very important to know whether or not your vitamin D level is low. And if it is low, that you get the appropriate supplementation of vitamin D to help support support your treatment for mental health. Now, I don't use vitamin D supplementation alone. I use it in conjunction with antidepressants and psychotherapy. That's what I found to be the most robust treatment in my clinical practice. And when I supplement with vitamin D, I typically get good results. So what can lead to vitamin D deficiency? Well, obviously when you have depression and you're indoors, you're not gonna be coming outdoors much, your appetite is going to be poor, and that in and of itself can lead to low levels of vitamin D because you're not getting exposure from the sun and you're not getting vitamin D sources from your diet. Other risk factors or other populations that are at risk for low vitamin D are the older adults 
So the older adults are at an increased risk of low vitamin D because most of them are homebound, they're not getting outside much, and their skin's ability to process vitamin D or synthesize it is decreased with age. Another population that is at risk for low vitamin D is people with dark skin. The darker your skin, the harder it is for you to absorb vitamin D from the sun, and you would require higher amounts of sun exposure in order to synthesize and process enough vitamin D to meet your daily limits. Also, if you have any limits in fat absorption, because vitamin D is the fat soluble vitamin, if you have any diseases such as liver failure, cystic fibrosis, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, or ulcerative colitis, you may have an issue with absorbing and retaining vitamin D. Also, people who are obese tend to need more vitamin D because they have a larger layer of subcutaneous fat that requires more vitamin D than the average person. So even though they may be consuming the same amount of, of food as a person who isn't obese or the same amount of vitamin D as a person who isn't obese, they're gonna be at higher risk because they're gonna need more levels of vitamin D to get absorbed into the subcutaneous fat in their body. And another population that is at risk would be those who have had gastric bypass surgery. In gastric bypass surgery, the small intestine is frequently bypassed, and the small intestine is where a lot of the vitamin D absorption takes place. So when you bypass that area of the stomach, you will limit the ability of your body to absorb and synthesize vitamin D. So it's very important if you have any of these risk factors that you get your vitamin D levels checked and make sure that you are getting enough vitamin D supplementation to avoid a vitamin D deficiency. So what is the right amount of vitamin D? Well, the National Institute of Health recommends a daily intake of vitamin D based on your age. So anywhere from 400 international units to 800 international units a day of vitamin D should be sufficient. However, if you're dealing with someone who has a low vitamin D level, to start with, those values may need to go as high as 4,000 or 10,000 international units per day, depending on the level of vitamin D that you have already in your body. And that should be done very cautiously. The upper limit of supplementation is 4,000 international units, and you can go higher than that, but you have to be under the direction of your provider because there are risks of going higher than 4,000 international units of vitamin D. And in many of the research studies that were conducted to show whether or not vitamin D had any impact on depression, those supplementations were varied significantly, anywhere from 400 international units a day to 40,000 international units a week, even up to 300,000 international units in one bolus dose or injection of vitamin D was used in these varying studies that were done on vitamin D. And that is one of the many critiques of the research on vitamin D and depression is that there are so many varying doses of vitamin D used in these research studies and there isn't a standard dose of vitamin D that's being used consistently to show effectiveness of vitamin D on depression. Vitamin D resources go beyond just a supplement. So you can get vitamin D in other sources, at, such as the sun, as we mentioned earlier, it is the sunshine vitamin. So how much sun is enough? Well, according to the National Institute of Health, anywhere from five to 30 minutes of sunlight in direct sunlight, so anywhere between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. has been found to have the most sunlight is what's shown to be effective, and they recommend daily exposure is best, but at least two days a week would be enough in order for you to synthesize re and retain enough vitamin D 
for that week. Now, if you're darker skinned, you're gonna be more towards that 30 minute mark in order to get enough sun exposure to synthesize vitamin D, because as we mentioned before, the melanin can block the effectiveness of those UV rays to penetrate the skin and to be effective in synthesizing vitamin D. And of course, our diet is another good source of vitamin D. So food sources of vitamin D include fatty fish, such as salmon, trout, mackerel, halibut, and even tuna. Also fish liver oil, specifically cod fish liver oil is actually one of the most potent resources of vitamin D and just a tablespoon of cod liver oil a day can give you the amount of vitamin D that you need. And mushrooms are also rich in vitamin D, but they have varying levels of vitamin D depending on whether or not they were treated with UV light or exposed to UV light. Other food sources that have smaller amounts of vitamin D will be beef liver, egg yolks, and cheese. There are other foods that are fortified with vitamin D. So vitamin D has been added to certain foods such as milk and even plant-based milks like soy milk and almond milk can be fortified with vitamin D. So just check the label to see if yours is. And also orange juice and many cereals are also fortified with vitamin D. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there's a varying degree of vitamin D supplementation out there. And it's always best if you're going to supplement with vitamin D that you speak with your provider so you can get your blood levels checked of vitamin D, see where you're at to determine what amount of supplementation would be right for you because there is a risk of vitamin D toxicity. Though this is something that is very rare, it can occur. If you're taking amounts greater than 10,000 units daily on a regular basis, you could be at risk of vitamin D toxicity. And vitamin D toxicity causes increased calcium levels in your blood and throughout your body. And so you will have symptoms of vomiting, nausea, constipation, and stomach pain or cramping. This could lead to dehydration and loss of appetite, also fatigue and dizziness, and then excessive urination because your kidneys are trying to eliminate the extra calcium in your system. And if it's not able to do this, then it could lead to kidney stones and even kidney failure, which can then lead to high blood pressure and heart abnormalities, specifically irregular heart rates and hallucinations and even confusion can be a result of vitamin D toxicity. And of course, in its worst form, this can all lead to death. So that's why it's very important that if you are going to supplement with vitamin D, that you make sure to do so under the direction of your provider. So to sum it all up, vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. And yes, there is a link to vitamin D and depression. However, the link to vitamin D and depression is still very unclear. And there's no standard guideline that says X amount of vitamin D will treat depression. The research out there is mixed. So it's best to get your vitamin D levels checked to see if you're deficient in vitamin D. And if you are, then supplement with vitamin D under the direction of your provider. So that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and topic on vitamin D. So do you have other tips or a personal story with using vitamin D? Go ahead and put that in the comment section below. I love reading about your experiences and so do others as it helps us all learn and grow on our mental health journeys together. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because it really helps us to get this information out to others who may need a little bit of support in their mental health care journey. I thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week.